this is Off The Grid 2. Now this show is about one group's experience living off the grid. Um, some people say, you're not off the grid, change the channel, you're on YouTube. Now this show won't be about defining the term. The term off the grid is defined by people differently. But I can't say from my year experience up here, it's always been a work in progress. Now at the present, we got three people, five dogs and one cat and 14 chickens. And I've been off the grid for 336 days and counting. One of the first things that I had to learn about when I came up here was energy. I mean, you know, uh, the system of power and everything um, and basic energy conservation. After living in San Francisco in the Bay Area for the last decade, you know, this took some adjusting. Now, I've been coming up here, you know, for years before I moved up here and everything. And um, back then, see, we, don't have, we didn't have the juice that we have today. I first came up here, um, I came up in uh, my truck with pulling a camper. And I had an inverter attached to the battery of the truck which provided electricity for uh, AC electricity. Uh, and I used that when I needed to use power tools like drills and stuff. I used also DC electricity, 12 volts at the time, with one automotive battery. Um, and what I powered with that mostly was my shortwave radio. Uh, it has the option to power on DC. The way I charge the battery, of course, like I just didn't sit here with running the truck to charge the battery, that's really like waste of a gas or diesel fuel or in this case vegetable oil. But anyway, it's a waste. And so what I would do is every time I go to town, I would charge the battery in the truck. And then uh, by the time I got back from town, because it's like one hour and a half uh, with that big truck, uh, just to get to the main road. So minimum going to town, even if I did, you know, didn't do anything at all, was like three hours. So I charged the battery, and then with that battery charged, I could listen to the radio, the shortwave radio, or sometimes I'd play my iPod onto an old set of computer speakers that I rewired. After that, I bought a uh, generator. Uh, an old um, uh, Lister copy generator. Uh, the idea was to run it on vegetable oil. Um, it's huge, 28 horsepower. It weighs about a ton, literally. The engine is about 2,000 pounds. The gen head itself is almost 1,000 pounds. And it generates uh, 24 kilowatts, no more than that. Anyway, way more than I would ever want to use. And I ran it, built it, it took about well over a year to build it because I had to build a building to put it in first. Uh, uh, and then, so I got this huge generator and I buried um, underground uh, cable from the generator running 220 from the generator house, which is also the tool shed, to what we call uptown, which is where we are now, and uh, to downtown, which is down. The hill. We also have the suburbs, which is up. Anyway, it's all we got 220, um, 100 amp service. The uh, We have so much electricity here that we actually have to use it. It also runs on vegetable oil. The generator, the 2800, 28 uh, kilowatt generator uh, running on vegetable oil. So run now four hours, take about two gallons of vegetable oil and um, all the power that we can ever possibly use. place for dogs that have no place in the city and they have uh, something to do up here they have a job which is healthy for dogs uh, emotional stability is to have a feel like they're needed Just a few seconds ago, the 3600 RPM gasoline generator from um, Home Depot was running. 
and that is the backup generator for the big diesel generator that runs on vegetable oil, which is currently not running, which is why we're running a backup generator. Um, what happened was the Lister engine uh, had a problem and it ended up twisting off the, uh, the uh, camshaft and it broke about like a year ago and I haven't fixed it. So anyway, get the generator fixed right away or come up with an alternate solution at which time I decided to get some solar panels. So I got three solar panels producing in reality about 400 watts, 400 to 500 on a nice sunny day. Um, and uh, they go to a charge controller which goes to a set of 48 volt batteries that I got at Sam's Club, golf cart get batteries. And I've been growing the system, you know. Then later on I got a good inverter, not one of these cheap Craig and Auto supply inverters. Now they work okay for running your coffee grinder or something like that, um, but they really don't work for other stuff and they're not very efficient. So I finally got a good Outback, is a brand name, uh, inverter, sine wave inverter, pure sine wave, has a charger built in so that when I'm running the generator I'm also charging the battery which is very useful too because then you can take maximum use of the generator uh, while you're running it to charge the battery you're not completely dependent on the solar panels. That's right different types of light bulbs make a huge difference um, 40 watt fluorescent lights right now I've got when I turn on all the lights we have in the studio with the exception of the film light um, it runs 10 watts outside, 5 watts there, 10 watts there, what did I just say, about 25 watts total. So in the future actually, on that light note, I want to put a wind generator up. <clears throat> because very often on days that it's not sunny, like when it's raining, it is windy and so we still get electricity. Um, and also I need to fix the grease generator. Um, and that, so I don't have to run the uh, backup generator which runs on gasoline. In the future I do want to experiment with other concepts but I have no idea what I'll come up with because that's what research is all about. You know you work towards something and you might end up someplace else.